Education. One of the primary metrics that the previous administration had used to justify agenda regarding energy policy, just justify regulatory, its regulatory agenda regarding energy policy, is the social cost of carbon, which is defined as the economic damages associated with a metric ton of carbon dioxide emissions summed across a particular time horizon. There are three primary statistical models that the Obama administration's interagency working group had used to estimate the SEC, the DICE model, the FUN model, and the PAGE model. My colleagues and I have used the Dyson Fund models, testing their sensitivity to a variety of important assumptions. Our work, published both at Heritage as well as in the peer-reviewed literature, has repeatedly illustrated that while these models might be interesting for academic exercises, they can be readily manipulated by regulators and bureaucrats. Moreover, if one were to take the IWG's interpretation of these models seriously and imp implement the associated regulations, there would be significant damage to the economy. In particular, our analysis finds that by 2035, the country would experience an average employment shortfall of 400,000 lost jobs, a marked increase in electricity prices, and an aggregate $2.5 trillion loss in GDP. Our analysis using the model of the for the assessment of greenhouse gas-induced climate change has found that these devastating impacts would be accompanied by insignificant changes in less than two-tenths of a degree Celsius in temperature mitigation and less than two centimeters of sea level rise reduction. In conclusion, the SEC is a broken tool for regulatory policy, and taking it seriously would provide significant harm and little environmental benefit. Dr. Dairatna, what are your biggest concerns about using the SEC in policy making? <clears throat> yeah. uh, thank you for the question, Congressman. So there are a variety of issues with these SECs, uh, with, the, with these IAMs associated with these SECs. Uh, the most fundamental issue is that they are extremely sensitive to very, very reasonable changes in assumptions. As I was referring to the time, using the time horizon to 300 years, if you shift that to 150 years, which is still unrealistic, you get a drastically different estimate of the SEC. The discount rate, if you use a 7% discount rate as mandated by the OMB, under the fund model, you will get a negative social cost of carbon. And the policy implication there would be that we shouldn't be taxing carbon dioxide emissions but subsidizing it. Then lastly, with the equilibrium climate sensitivity distributions, there, the ECS distribution used has, was published 10 years ago, and it's not even based on empirical research. More up-to-date ECS distributions also will result in a substantially lower and even potentially negative SCC, depending on the model that you use. So with these results all over the map, I do not understand how policymakers can garner any meaningful advice for regulatory policy. So just, just for the laymen uh, who are here, can just what does the negative value of SEC uh, kind of connote. I mean, what, what are we really saying there when we say negative value? Basically, in a nutshell, in, in general, when people think of SEC, they talk about economic damages associated with carbon dioxide emissions. When those damages are negative, that implies that the SEC it actually provides benefits. And the result of that is, you know, mostly increased photosynthesis, agriculture, and so forth. But that would suggest that increased CO2 is actually good for the planet. The ECS, the equilibrium climate sensitivity distribution that is, Im that is implemented in these models by the IWG it has, it was published 10 years ago in the journal Science. That is a whole decade ago, and it is not even empirically estimated. It was calibrated to a priori assumptions that the IWG wanted to use regarding climate change. Now, if you look at the more recent distributions, you will notice significantly lower probabilities of extreme global warming. So what ended up happening was that using this outdated distribution, there, well, there was an overstated probability of extreme global warming, and that gets manifested in higher estimates of the SEC. So basically, the SEC estimates were essentially beefed up. Okay. And, and given what you just said, do you think it's advisable to continue using the current social cost of carbon estimates in rulemaking proceedings? Absolutely not. I think these models, you know, they're interesting for academic exercises, but they need to be revised to be suitable for regulatory policy. And, you know, there was a question that came up earlier about the use of a 7% discount rate and why it was not used. Quite frankly, here's the reason why I think it wasn't used. Even using the outdated Roe Baker distribution, you still get a negative estimate of the SEC under a 7% discount rate. Okay. That's why it wasn't used.